Itopia is an automation and management platform that allows you to build a cloud-based remote desktop environment in Google Cloud in only a few hours. Today we will walk through the process of creating a deployment. The first time you log in to the Itopia Cloud Automation Stack portal, you'll be presented with this screen to create a deployment. Step one will be to name the deployment. And then you can also define a deployment code, but for this, we're just going to leave the default. We'll choose Remote Desktop Services and click Create. So this will be the first step in creating our deployment. The next piece will be to define our time zone, our operating system, the domain controllers and RDS environment will run on, and then the estimated number of users. Now when we talk about the operating systems, these will be the operating systems for the infrastructure. And you have your choice to build on Server 2012 R2, 2016, or 2019. My advice is to build your infrastructure on 2019 because then you can use a down-level session host like Server 2012 R2 or 2016. If you build on, say, Server 2012 R2, you'll have problems adding Server 2016 or Server 2019 session hosts to that environment. So here we'll choose Server 2019 and then an estimation of the number of users you'll be supporting. This will just give us a cost estimation at the end of the process. The next piece we focus on is Active Directory and DNS. So Itopia gives you the ability to create a new Active Directory domain during the Remote Desktop Services creation process, extend into an existing Active Directory domain. This we're thinking about an on-premises Active Directory. So if you have an environment on-premises already and you want to extend it into the cloud, this is a great way to do it. When we choose this, we'll ask for credentials to connect to your local Active Directory. We'll even automate the VPN creation process in the Google Cloud Console for you, and then provide you with the pre-shared key and ask you to choose whether this will be an Ike v1 or v2 implementation. Identify the IP address that the VPN tunnel will connect to, say the on-premises router, and then credentials and such to connect to the Active Directory. Once all of that's done, then we'll create a new VM in Google Cloud and promote it to a domain controller within the on-premises domain. So now you'll have a domain controller running in Google Cloud. Then we'll build remote desktop services around that new domain controller. We do require a domain controller in Google Cloud because that reduces the latency during the build process, also during all the authentication experiences your cloud-based users will encounter. Our third option is also to leverage the new Google Managed Service for Microsoft Active Directory. So we can build our environment and build against that existing managed service. That way you don't have to worry about actually managing those domain controllers. The next piece will be to define the username suffix, say contoso.com. For ours, we'll use cloudvdi.com, cloudvdi.local for the actual Active Directory name, then we're asked if we want to deploy a redundant domain controller or not. Our recommendation is to deploy a redundant domain controller. If you have custom group policies, we can actually import them from a Google bucket during the provisioning process so all of your existing group policies can now be leveraged. And then for an external connection point, you have to define your external DNS name. And for this one, we'll use cloudvdi.net. For us to use this external domain name, we have to own it or have access to be able to manage it. We will have to create DNS A records for this domain and we will need an SSL certificate for this domain. We accept wildcard certificates or if you want to generate SSL certificates based on specific servers, at the end of the provisioning process, it'll actually identify the actual server name you'll need the SSL certificate for. Now, all of this is because we're deploying the remote desktop gateway role. If you want to deploy redundant remote desktop gateways, we give you that ability as well. And then we'll put a Google load balancer in front of the two gateways. For larger deployments or highly available deployments, this is encouraged. We can either dedicate the remote desktop broker, which is the default, or if you are building a smaller environment and you want to consolidate VM roles, you can put the broker on the user session server as well. We can also deploy a redundant broker. 
redundant brokers will give us better availability in the event of an outage, but they also require a SQL backend for this high availability. Adding SQL to this will increase the cost of your environment. File sharing. So I'm going to move to file share and user profile so that we talk about them together because one will impact the other. We have included the NetApp Cloud Volume Services. This is our preferred storage model now for the user profiles because the NetApp Cloud Volume Service is a managed storage service. You no longer have to manage a separate Windows server. If you want to use a Windows server, you are welcome to. But in a multi-region deployment, using the Windows File Server means if a user logs into the first region, they can create their desktop. When they log into the second region, they'll have to create a new desktop experience, where if they use the NetApp Cloud Volume Service with the FSLogix Profile Container capabilities, no matter which region of your multi-region deployment the user logs into, they'll have the very same user desktop experience. So for this one, we're going to choose NetApp Cloud Volume Services and FSLogix Profile Containers. If you want traditional user profile disks, you're welcome to choose that when you choose a Windows File Server. If you don't want persistent profiles, you can define that here. Or if you have another profile management tool, again, you can define that right here as well. So at this page, now we select a project to build into. I'm going to select this project. And now the portal will go through the process of enabling the necessary APIs so that Itopia can build your remote desktop services deployment within your Google project. This is where project permissions are actually granted to each of these APIs to your Google project. Now we're using the NetApp Cloud Volume and those APIs did not enable by default. This is very intentional by NetApp so all we do is click Enable, and this is where we separately enable the NetApp Cloud Volume Services. So we just click Enable here. We have to agree to their terms and conditions. We check the box, click Agree, and now it's enabling the NetApp Cloud Volume Services for our Google project. Now that this is done, we can move back over to our portal, click Refresh, and it's verified that the API has been enabled. So now all of the APIs have been enabled. So now we move on to the regions where we can choose which region or regions where we want to deploy our remote desktop services infrastructure. So I'm going to start with Iowa in US Central 1, and then we could add a second region. Let's choose London. So we can go Europe West 2 for our second region. Now also note that by default, each region is going to have its own unique subnet scheme and this is so that you can have unique IP addresses throughout your whole region. You also have the ability to change this subnet if you want to leverage a different subnet in a particular region. And so we've added two regions. We'll go with this and now when we look below we'll see that we're going to create four VMs in each region. So this is going to say that we're going to have a user session server in Europe West 2 and one in US Central 1. Again, redundant domain controllers, one per region, the remote desktop gateways, one per region, the remote desktop brokers, one per region. The great part about this architecture is it will be a single active directory so a user can log into either infrastructure and have the same desktop experience because we're using FSLogix and the NetApp cloud volume services. Each region can also stand on its own. So let's say we happen to lose the US Central 1, the Iowa Google Cloud region for some reason. Users will still be able to log into the London Europe West 2 region and continue to work until the Iowa region comes back online. We also give you the ability to integrate the stack driver monitoring and logging agents. So during the build process, they will actually be integrated into the environment and that will help with gathering insights around performance and virtual machine management. We then click next again and our last page will be a summary of what we're about to provision. So now we see the summary, our internal DNS name, the operating system we'll build against, the four domain controllers were built because we have two in each Google Cloud region, the desktop gateways, by default, we'll start with just a single user session server in each region. 
On a later video, I'll show you how to manage images so that we can then build a specific image for your user community and then deploy that image across one or both regions. We again will have also a remote desktop broker in each region. So here is your estimated cost if we're going to run for 24 by 7 in a month or if we use this server uptime feature. We'll have that in a future video as well so that you can control costs by shutting off your resources when your users don't need those resources anyway. At the end, we then authorize this build and click deploy. And so now it's creating our deployment and this will take a couple hours. Now our deployment has started and you'll come back to the dashboard view. And so our deployment demo, here's its name. This E46 is actually the deployment code and then during the provisioning process, you'll have your provisioning status right here. You can refresh this and check on the provisioning process. This will take just a couple hours to deploy. What I found is a single Google region takes about two hours, usually less. When we create a multi-region deployment, it may take a little more time, should take less than three hours though. I'll show you this deployment once the whole provisioning process has completed. In our next video, I'll go through this deployment that we've created and I'll show you how to take advantage of the Itopia portal to manage this new environment.